Hi students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science. This is module five on the Earth's processes and our first video for this particular module where we're going to be looking at origins uh, in general and specifically at the Uri Miller experiment. So in this first video what we want you to be able to do is investigate evidence for the origin of organic molecules in the earth including the specifics around the Uri Miller experiment. So we've set some criteria up for you to be able to describe the Uri Miller experiment to describe some aspects of the early earth and the formation of organic molecules and then to evaluate some of the hypotheses regarding these early earth uh, atmosphere and how these organic chemicals may have formed. So it's very difficult to talk about uh, the beginnings of life on earth without talking about origins and there's so many different um, cultures and traditions that have origin stories. Our school is on Waramai land in New South Wales and the Waramai have uh, a great creator spirit that they talk about, um, Bayame. And this is the source of creation. You see this in some of the Aboriginal artworks on the rocks. And um, this is the spirit that they have credited with creation of their nation. The Bible too in Genesis talks about God's creation by his word, bringing everything um, that we see in the universe and on earth uh, into being through his word. We also look at the evolution of the biosphere, the origin of, uh, in, in our year 11 course, we looked at the origin of the universe, some ideas around how the earth, the solar system, and specifically the earth formed um, through uh, meteorite impact, accretion, through the modeling that we talked about. And now what we wanna do is to take that model a little bit further on, look at some aspects of the early atmosphere and at some of the experiments that were undertaken to try and model how that early earth atmosphere may have given rise to organic molecules. When you talk about the idea of the evolution of life on earth and the components in the biosphere, we um, have an interesting idea that came through in the 1900s from Pasteur, that idea that life comes from life. And this was a really important idea. But the important thing about this idea is if we take it back far enough, it couldn't have. There has to be a point where we have some sort of uh, inorganic molecules, giving rise to organic molecules. And these in turn, then giving rise to some sort of uh, replicators, something that was actually capable of self-replication. Now, even at this level here, the chemistry involved is quite complex. And yet there seems to be some evidence to suggest that the early atmosphere may have contained much simpler kinds of um, substances, compounds and elements. And therefore, um, we need to talk about how we get to these organic molecules before we get to something that's actually capable of replication and gets to something that we might actually refer to as a form of life. Now, Darwin also suggested that life might have arisen from some warm little pond with all sorts of ammonia and phosphoric salts, light, heat, electricity, and so on. More closely related to the experiments that we're going to talk about are the ideas of Haldane and Operon. Haldane's idea was the idea of a primordial soup, that is, um, a liquidy substance with a number of different types of substances within it and that that combination of things together was where we started this whole process of organic uh, evolution. Operin talked about cells first through the development of some sort of a membrane which acted as a containment vessel. Now all of these ideas about early life still required a very important chemical and that important chemical was a protein. We know in our own bodies that proteins uh, have a huge range of different functions. They're structural, um, they're transport, they're used for transport, they're, 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 they're enzymes so they catalyze different types of chemical reactions in our bodies. There's a whole range of them. They're, they're a component, a, a key component 
in the cell membrane around um, the chemicals that are inside the cell, separating the internal from the external. So proteins were a critical first start on this idea of organic evolution and then leading on to the evolution of, of things which we might call life. But proteins are complex molecules. They're made of much simpler units called amino acids. But we recognize about 20 different types of amino acids. So how did these first amino acids form? This is the idea of the Yuri Miller experiment. The Yuri Miller experiment was designed to try and get at the origin of organic molecules, to try and recreate the early Earth atmosphere and to um, simulate what might have happened and to see whether or not that would be something that could actually generate any of these sorts of molecules. And of course, um, to, to spoil the story, um, they were able to do so. The mixture of the early atmosphere that they used was uh, ammonia, methane, and hydrogen gas. They contained these within a, light, within a glass chamber, which was then sparked with um, electricity to try and simulate, simulate something like lightning. Remember, at this point, we have no oxygen. So there's no oxygen in the atmosphere at this stage. There's no ozone layer. There's no protection um, from a lot of the harmful radiation that was coming from the sun. Um, but the, there was certainly some heat and the water was a key component of this as well. So as the, the steam cycled through this glass container, we had water mixing with the ammonia, the methane and the hydrogen. What he found was changes, or what Miller noticed when he, he looked at this, this, this is around about the early 1950s, um, was that the water had actually started to change colour. So he had a section um, that was uh, kind of simulating what might happen in the ocean. So a little water body where as these gases were cycling around, they were able to sort of pass through the water and... Um, and so therefore, um, potentially, if they were large molecules, um, they might precipitate. If they were soluble molecules, they might dissolve. Um, so he could get an idea of what was actually going on and whether or not there was anything um, being produced as a result of this reaction. And of course, there was. That change in color, that turbidity that was noticed in the um, simulated ocean was actually the presence of particular types of amino acids. Subsequent experiments or repetitions of this experiment with some slight modifications in the early um, atmospheric mixtures did create different types of amino acids. Remember, we need 20 of them for all of the different sorts of proteins that, that we recognize that, that are used in our bodies. And even without that great range, there still needed to be a reasonable number of different types of amino acids in order for um, these early organic molecules to, to start to work. Now, we know that uh, in some of our previous studies, We've, we know that about the DNA, we know that the DNA is a code, and we know that that DNA code codes for particular types of proteins, which is actually a sequence of amino acids to build a certain protein. So there's actually a lot of complex chemistry associated with the origin of organic molecules. But if you start with an atmosphere that only contains ammonia, methane, and hydrogen, as well as uh, oxygen, as well as water, then you don't have any of those important organic molecules. And so those are going to need to develop um, through some sort of process, which Yuri and Miller were able to propose. Now, this is just one idea about the um, origin of organic molecules. And there's a couple of others that we will look at too, but we'll look at those in a future video. Thanks for watching.